Hello friends, this is Durga again from IT University, a one-stop shop to learn all the technologies. At this time, we are talking about uh, HDPCA or HTTP Certified Administrator course. And uh, uh, currently, I am uh, showcasing configuring name node high availability. I have uh, explained a little bit of concepts around it and also the architecture going through the documentation. And then I have shown you how to uh, configure uh, high availability using Ambari. So now let us review the different components using the Ambari interface. Um, after con after uh, uh, configuring the high availability and also let us understand the relevance of those things. So now you can see that you don't see name node and secondary name node anymore. Instead you see standby name node and active name node. So one will be acting as standby and one will be acting as active name node. And also there are couple of controllers called zookeeper failover controller. So when we actually set up, we haven't chosen these two things. This, these two things will be installed on the active and standby name nodes. So one zookeeper failover controller is on um, the uh, node where active node is running at, at this time and another on the standby name node. So this zookeeper failover controller will keep track um, uh, that the active name node is, uh, is sending um, uh, active name node is sending the uh, edit logs or the changes that are happening on the name node to the majority of the journal nodes. If it is not sending, then uh, um, it it thinks that there is something wrong on the cluster and it will immediately uh, fail over to the it will immediately try to fail over to the other. Uh, surviving node which will be standby so the standby name node will become the active name node so that's the relevance of the zookeeper failover controller and then on top of this you also see journal nodes journal nodes as i have mentioned to you earlier uh, are the ones which will uh, get the data from active name node so whenever there are changes to the name node metadata or metadata that will be stored in the in memory name node in memory component called name node whenever there are changes to that those changes will be applied onto the majority of the journal nodes so at least you have to configure three and uh, if you want to configure higher than three it, it has to be odd number so that uh, the split brain scenario is avoided uh, because if it is even then uh, it will be tough to uh, to determine whether the uh, active name node is sending information to majority of the journal nodes if it is odd it's easy uh, two, two is considered to be majority on a three journal node configuration three is con considered as a majority in a five node uh, configuration that's why we we always choose odd number of nodes to support uh, these things so active name node will be sending uh, the changes to the metadata happening uh, in the cluster uh, to majority of the journal nodes and standby name node will try to read from one of the journal nodes to reduce the latency between the active and standby. And also heartbeats will be sent every second uh, from data nodes to, the, uh, to both active and the standby name node. And if there are any changes to the block reports, those details will be updated on both. So that's the architecture of the high availability. So you will see journal nodes, uh, active name node, standby name node, and also zookeeper failover controller. Uh, in case if active name node have some issues, zookeeper failover controller that is running on each uh, on both uh, the active and standby name node will take over, uh, take care of failing over to the other node in the cluster. Okay. Now you can validate, test that by going to the active name node and bring it down. So where is that active name node? This is the active name node. Click on stop, click on okay. Okay. So right now active name node is running on 39 and we have stopped that on 39. And we will see what will happen once it is stopped. Now it is stopped and go to Ambari. Still HDFS is running. You can see 
one name node is stopped but other immediately become active and zookeeper failover controller will take care of the of it so now you can start it even if you don't start the zookeeper failover controller will take care of starting it after a while click on okay so that's how it works so we have active passive name nodes or active standby name nodes and then three journal nodes and then zookeeper failover controller uh, that will be supporting the hdfs high availability once the hdfs high availability is configured there will be changes to the configuration files now if you go to the configs okay and uh, search for fs default fs fs dot default fs you can see that um, the uh, the the uh, uh, the value of this parameter have changed uh, from host column port uh, which was pointing to 38 column 8020 earlier to hdpns because uh, now um, uh, um, for transparent failover when we should not hard code the ip address instead we will be hiding the ip addresses behind the namespace and then using the namespace and a set of other parameters um, it will uh, the namespace will try to resolve to the active name node all the time so now if you go to any of the node in the hadoop cluster and go to etc hadoop conf and then look into coset.xml you can see and the IP address have changed it to the namespace. And then you can go to HDFS site.xml. And you can see that failover proxy is configured. So this will take care of failing over the uh, cluster, Fla failing over the name node in the cluster. And then uh, there are two na uh, two name nodes in this configuration. One is NN1 and NN2. And now if you start searching for NN1, you will get set of parameters starting from the http address which is for name node web interface to many other things okay so there will be a set of parameters based on the uh, names given to the name nodes in this case we have two name nodes so there will be set of parameters on nn1 and there will be set of parameters on nn2 so if you don't use ambari you have to take care of all these things manually it is very error prone that's why you should consider using ambari okay so now once we validated the parameter files okay now we will actually have a look at the name node uh, ui okay so you log into the name node ui and you can see the details and you can also browse the file system without any issues on the active name node but at the same time if you go to quick links and go to the standby name node and click on name node ui the name node ui will open but when you go to the bro utilities browse the file system it says is not supported in state standby so you cannot read the metadata in standby mode hence this web interface will not work completely for on a standby whereas on active it will and you can access all your files through name node user interface so the, uh, one uh, another thing which you need to remember when you configure the uh, high availability is the timing so if you start with hdfs and if you immediately 
configure high availability in HDFS, then it will work without any issues. But if you deploy several tools in your um, cluster, such as Hive, uh, Uzi, etc., and uh, if you try to configure high availability after that, then there is a the, uh, there can be some potential issues. Let me show you that. I am coming out of the uh, 39. I am on the gateway node, and uh, then launching Hive. So it is very important to validate each and every technology that is already deployed like I am doing for Hive. You have to go through each and every technologies. If you enable, enable high availability after tools are added to the cluster. If you do it initially itself, once you set up the cluster immediately if you configure high availability, you don't need to worry much about it. But in my case, all these tools are there for quite some time and there can be potential impact. So I should validate all my tools in the cluster. Um, using the standard process uh, for the given organization. You have to plan that. Uh, um, uh, you have to perform uh, smoke test on each and every application that, are, that will be running on the cluster once the high availability is configured. So let me see if there are any tables. So there is a table called deck of cards and also T and if I say describe formatted deck of cards and hit enter okay uh, it has changed the uh, namespace to um, sorry ip address of uh, uh, name node to hdpms here so it will work without any issue in the earlier versions of um, uh, ambari or cloudera manager when we actually configure high availability here it will be pointing to the uh, world uh, value of the FS default FS, and we used to end, uh, we used to run scripts uh, to update the metadata. But in the latest version, they have taken care. But the main point is you have to validate each and every tool once you configure the high availability in the cluster. So select star from deck of cards. I'm just running a query. select count of one from deck of cards and hit enter so right now it is running in the test context i will try to run it in the ml context also to make sure hive is running properly test is running properly map reduce is running properly and if you have spark you have to validate spark you have to validate each and every component individually i will not be doing uh, uh, the validation for all the components at this time but you need to aware about that. You have to validate each and every component once you set up the uh, high availability uh, on the cluster, on the name node especially. And then set hive.execution engine equal to MR and run the count of one from deck of cards which will submit a map to job and let's see if it completes successfully so it seems to be running fine uh, because the uh, job is submitted and also it has started the job let's wait until we see some progress yeah it's running fine so that's how you need to validate each and every component in the cluster once high availability is configured uh, and that's it. So we have successfully enabled the high availability of name node uh, on the cluster using Ambari and then we have validated high uh, map reduce as well as tests in the cluster. Uh, if you are using other technologies, make sure you validate those things also because when you actually develop the applications in some places you might have hard coded. For example, uh, in case of name node, when you specify the target directory, you can give the name node URL also. So if you have the scripts which are which have the name node URLs or the hive table hive create table commands which have the name node URLs, you have to refactor to change the 
uh, IP address uh, colon port number from the old name node to namespace so that those scripts will work successfully. That being said, I hope you are enjoying the content on the channel. If you like this video, please click on the like button. If you want to provide the feedback, please use the comment section of the video. The job has executed successfully in the MR context also. Hence, our name node high availability configuration is done. And finally, if you want to discuss further about the certifications or big data, please join my LinkedIn groups called ITVersity hyphen certifications or ITVersity hyphen big data. And finally, if you are not subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. You will get to see a lot more content like this over time. Thank you. Bye.